off my chair. No. Oh. Yeah. Hello and welcome to From the Depths the Designer. Continuing my armor test series. Just a forward for those of you who have not watched this. This is basically a little series where I try to test to find out what's the best kind of armor setup and as well as what kind of weapons are good against what kinds of armor. And today we're going to look at uh, lasers versus armor. Now, not really. A, this is not really a tutorial. This is sort of a live experimentation. More for my own sake. At the end of this series, I will make a little compressed video carrying all the video, all the information that I've learned from these tests. Now, firstly, the armor we have: three layer thick wood, wooden beams with a small little critical piece of uh, equipment at the back of it. Specifically for testing of spaced armor. Lightweight alloy, because lightweight alloy. I don't particularly use lightweight alloy, but it's nice to for me to find out whether or not uh, it's useful at all. Now, heavy... that are that we give to metal beams, and specifically double thick metal beams, because metal beams, if you don't know, if you put them in layers, they their armor effectiveness stacks. Increasing their how much, much health they have and how much armor protection they give. Overall, a lot better in, in double layers. And of course, here we get to ERA armor. Now, of course, ERA armor is only useful against uh, um, shaped charge warriors from advanced cannons, but it, nevertheless, it's, it's a layer that weapons need to get through, so I generally put it on for the other tests. And of course, heavy armor, the most ridiculous fucking thing in the entire galaxy. And we get on to what's basically a bit of wood and a shield generator. Now, those of you who don't know, if you look at a shield generator, there's a laser absorb function. It's very important because we're testing lasers. Laser absorb uh, will basically absorb all the, some of the damage of a laser. And the important thing to know about that is it actually requires energy storage. We found that out today. This energy storage needs to come from um, battery storage and electric engine. Of course, these other engines are fighting power for the battery. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, firstly, I've got in here for myself a what I uh, feel is a reasonable laser. Well, cer certainly reasonable for a beam and pulse. Excuse me, I just want to add one last little bit of it. Someone said I could do that. Well, it seems they lied to me. Bastards. Nevertheless, we've got the reasonable laser here. Beam laser, because this is what we'll be testing at first. And battery storage for the beam laser. Alright, let's get here. Where are you? Alright, multipurpose laser source. Uh, 34 con connectors, continuous damage, uh, with a 400 meter range, and 5 AP. That's the sort of thing I like about From the Depths, is that lasers are what lasers would be in real life. Now, typically I don't tend to use lasers because, uh, I just don't like them. I think it's, um but cheaty in a way, but nevertheless. Now, how am I going to do this? I've got a timer here. And I'm gonna basically get on target and fire for 30 seconds. Because lasers, unlike cannons or cannons or missiles, it doesn't work really well in a single shot. It works in uh, damage over time. It doesn't do salvos, it doesn't do single shots. It does damage over time. Now, let's get this shit right. This time. 
All right, timer. We are aim on target. And and we can might as well stop the timer now. In what's basically six seconds, it has managed to gut th straight through basically all of the wooden armor there. Rather a worrying prospect. Can cut right through quite easily. Rather worrying prospect, I would say. Because if we look at this, uh, this is not that uh, big. This could easily be fit in a reasonably large gunship, but could be there, this be fitted on the gunship. And also, if we run by battery power alone, we don't need that much of an engine, big of an engine for this laser. So overall, it would be definitely a kind of a laser you would see used. Completely devastating the wood. Very worrying indeed. Now, let's get on to the next piece. We're going to go ahead and look at lightweight alloy versus laser. So, timer ready, fire. I'm going to stop the timer here. That's about 11 seconds, to, and it's pretty, pretty much gotten straight through it. Through it. Uh, again. Ugh. I just don't like lasers. They are so... It's just... This took me a few seconds to set up. Quite easy to get a... This powerful of a weapon. Well, of course, the resource cost is um, something you have to consider with the laser equipment. That they do, it does take quite a bit of a resources to set all this up, and it can be quite vulnerable if one of these pieces go, the, the whole thing is pretty much useless. But armor wise, there's not much I can do. Uh, we'll have to see what the steel does. My hope now lies in steel, because I don't like lightweight metal alloy. In all my tests, it seems to be quite useless. All right. All right, and let's start. Double thick steel versus laser. Oh, wow. Past 15 seconds. Oh, it's gone through the first layer of steel. Oh, it's gone through. Yeah, it's taken about 30 seconds to get through that. Now... So, double thick steel. Not much hope against a laser. Though... I was able to last against uh, until 30 seconds. Now, in that sort of time limit, my sort of cram cannons could retaliate. Uh, uh, cram cannons, advanced cannons, and missiles could be able to retaliate a lot faster. And of course, I always work in numbers and not um, one big unit. I use lots of smaller units. So, in this sort of situation, I believe I should be able to survive with uh, steel beams rather than anything else. Right, so, double thick steel, reasonably, f protects reasonably well against uh, lasers. Now, let's continue. We're going to go up against our reactive armor and metal beams. Alright, so after 15 seconds, uh, basically the same with the 
other ones is they basically cut through. The reactive armor does, does pretty much nothing to stop a laser. Though it's nice to know this. If I find a target that's got reactive armor and I want the reactive armor off, the use of a laser may be what I'm looking for. It won't have to be a very powerful laser, just a long range laser to strip off any sort of explosive reactive armor. But again, metal, reasonably well defended. If a. Uh, if a uh, bit heavy for an aircraft, but I've managed to make aircraft out of metal before. The question is. How well does this fare against heavy armor now? Heavy armor, for those of you who haven't watched my other uh, videos, is heavy armor is the most expensive and most strongest armor in the game. But it is gives us a lot gives a lot of protection and I've always I've been looking for ways to counter it. Part is partially why I actually started the series specifically only looking at the at the Heavy armor, but I decided to do everything at the same time. Because why not? Okay, timer reset. Let's begin the test. We're gonna see how much damage it does in 30 seconds. If it doesn't destroy a beam in 30 seconds, then I'm gonna be sadly disappointed. Now, our power pretty much runs out in 30 seconds as well, which is a bit of a problem. Time. Yep. Fuck all. Nothing. Heavy armor does not care for your crap. All right. So, I still refuse to use heavy armor even though it's so effective. Probably maybe one or two beams just to, uh, for protecting crucial equipment, but... Jesus. That's definitely a case of you just cannot get through this except... Well, cram cannons is about the only thing I found that could get through heavy armor and shaped charges. Now, here comes the very important one. We're going to start test how much protection we can get out of a shield absorbing laser. Now, power is back up. And we're going to go ahead and test this now. Oh my. The shield is actually preventing a lot of damage. Yes, indeed. Though the power storage there is a bit low. I'm not, I forgot to actually to stop my timer there. Whoopsie. But nevertheless, we can see now actually that the shield absorber is actually fucking valid tactic against lasers. Oh my. Well, now, of course, there is one more thing I want to do, and uh, will necessitate a little bit of a cut. All right, welcome back. What I basically did was, was I reset everything, because what I want to do is I want to do a second test of smoke dispensers. Now, why didn't I just do it for her? Because I want to see what happens with raw damage without any sort of smoke protection. Now I'm going to see what happens if we have actually got smoke dif dispensers uh, protecting it. Now you may see four protectors, but don't worry, only one of them will activate every whenever be active whenever a laser hits. I just put on four so there's continuous amount through the continuous amount of one layer of smoke during the 30 second burst. And we're gonna see now whether or not actually having smoke is worth it. So, time is ready and start. Oh, 
basically waiting until this thing burns straight through. Oh my. It's not really getting through that first layer of smoke. See, there's another smoke generator has gone off. The second one. It's the first one ran out. And that's about 30 seconds. Let's go inspect. Very little damage. Oh my god. Right. Back. So. We've tested our, our weapons and it seems very much that smoke really cuts down that, mm, that laser damage. Very good to know indeed. Because it really helps with the with the protection to it. I'm going to go ahead and do the test against uh, lightweight alloy and then against uh, metal beams and then I shall call this a uh, test against smoke conclusive. So, right, let's start this. We're going to see laser versus lightweight alloy and metal alloy worth protection against smoke. And, yeah, the, you can see for yourself the kind of result we have here. Now, definitely something I will have to consider doing is getting myself equipped with smoke generators. That's 30 seconds. Very little damaged indeed. So, in conclusion, I believe we can call it there. <laughs> if it's done very little damage against an alloy beam, then it's not going to do any damage against the heavy beams or reactive or um, he uh, heavy blocks. Well, I must question how much fuel does this thing have left? Mm, about half of its fuel. So all of that laser beaming uh, hasn't used up too much uh, ammunition and fuel for the, the smoke dispensers. Very good indeed. I guess really at this point uh, the only thing we can test now is of course a pulse laser. Alright, welcome back. Now I've applied two QQ switches to, to the setup we have here and I've also of course removed the uh, laser warners which will result in us getting a bit of a different result now this is a little hard to aim but I believe I can get this thing aimed so again we're going to go for 30 second bursts to see how much damage this does. That has gone through at about 6 seconds. And we hit the smoke generator now which obscures our smoke. Now, definitely the pulse laser Seems to be doing fairly well for itself. Destroyed the, the, the wooden blocks at the same time as the as the continuous uh, laser. Though the, the pulse laser has a lot more range, definitely. That does that uh, instant hit. Now, let us test against our. Old Nemesis, the lightweight alloy. Yeah, five seconds, faster than the uh, the um, other one. Mainly because uh, alloy is so much weaker. We could really punch through this and get it killed in a matter of seconds. 
It's a bit worrying. But we'll have to see how well it fares against the smoke in a moment. For now, let us go up against the double thick steel. Do hope the rattling of my watch doesn't uh, distract people too much. Call it there. Now that took about 20 seconds. Definitely the pulse laser. It found it a little bit easier to cut through uh, the metal steel beams, uh, double steel beams, than uh, it took for the beam laser. The beam laser took quite a bit of time to get through. Through uh, right, so definitely the more ideal one would be. Pulse laser for heavier targets, I, I believe. So, compared to the beam laser, which is more effective against lighter targets. Right, shall we go ahead and see how this fares just on one layer of steel beams of the reactive armor? Yeah, we've cut right through there. Ten seconds. Not an issue. Not a care in the world, really. Goes to prove. We really need to have double flick steel. Now for an aircraft this is gonna be a bit it we wouldn't be able to put it again on an aircraft. Now let's see how well it fares. Oh, excuse me against heavy armor. A big worry, a big thorn on my side. Yeah. It's not getting through, is it? Definitely not. Although in 30 seconds it managed to do quite a bit of damage. I suspect a much more a much larger laser will be required to get through heavy armor. Certainly a late stage of the campaign where I could, where I could afford a very big ship to lug such a powerful weapon to get through heavy armor kind enemies. All right, so let us see about our shield here. Now we did get, get a shield now online, and let's see about how well it can protect against lasers. Start the clock. Or pulse lasers, to be exact. Oh, it managed to get through. The beam laser had difficulty getting uh, through that, uh, that shield, but the pulse laser seems to have not have too much difficulty. Very interesting to know. So, if I see the depth of the amount that means you need beam lasers, then I don't have to worry that much. Now, do give me a moment while I quickly get my Laser one is back online. All right, smoke generators are set up. Let's see how well the beam, the pulse laser does. When it has to get through smoke as well. Oh, that little moment where, where when the smoke was still deploying, it was able to get do quite a bit of damage to that one beam. But for the most part, it seems it's not really capable of doing much damage, is it? Locks are quite safe again in the smoke. So similar results in comparison to when we were using the beam laser. 
actually going through the test or the other ones may very well just be a waste of time. These smoke generators really, really, really cut down on the effectiveness of shoot of lasers. Really brings it down. Now So really in all fairness the ideal thing that I need to do is well smoke generators are quite small and can fit quite easily into into a small ship. But the thing about smoke generators is they have limited times they can be used the moment you run out of ammo or fuel. They'll re introduce it, but on a big ship it's Quite possibly go ahead and go nuts. Use it as much as you want. I uh, definitely you would use that more than the laser absorb um, shield projectors. Now, of course, smoke does also work for your own shield, for your own laser. So, if uh, if I put a sm smoke generator on this laser, it's going to screw up this laser. If someone tries to laser my laser, and my laser becomes useless because my laser and my laser defense system ruins my laser. Hmm. Well, definitely, smoke protection is the way to go against lasers. Now, of course, there is the metal beams. Double thick metal beams should be enough for ships. Uh, one thick metal beam should be enough for aircraft. Possibly a la shield protector, laser protection, and also the smoke generators. Though, for me personally, using lasers, I don't think I will. Maybe for like an anti air weapon when I start noticing a really fast uh, flying enemy aircraft. Because if I show you here, if I, if I go looking at that direction and then I look here, it's near instant that those things swings around. It's uh, got no problem at aiming at, uh, at targets. So it should be very useful against uh, fast flying uh, flying enemies, it, provided they don't have too much smoke generators. Although I believe if I create a powerful enough laser, it should be able to counter through that, and possibly the use of a where is it? Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. You are here, wavefront adjuster. Yeah, that would be. Quite effective at uh, well, it would uh, be able to help negate the damage reduction of the of the smoke effects. Although that would require that requires a lot of testing going to get optimal thing. Though that's not really part for this. My name is Vincent Karma. Hope you enjoyed watching.